All right, so this is Revit 2019. Um, we're gonna open up a, a architectural template to see what we find inside. So we're gonna go over here to the architect architectural template, left click, and that brings us our preset template for uh, architectural specific modeling, okay? Right-hand side, we've got our properties. On the left-hand side, we have our floor plan set up, our ceiling plans, our elevations. Um, there's nothing in legends, schedules, or sheets. That all has to be added in manually. Um, we do have a list of families available. So we can see automatically that if we look into doors, there is a single flush door that is available, and it's available in multiple sizes, from a 30-inch to a 36-inch. Um, and 80 inch or 84 inch height doors, okay? So we can use this list over here to see what we have available, what's kind of, what's canned in our template, uh, or we can add things in later, okay? So I'm just gonna hide this again by clicking the minus sign. Um, so the way our, uh, Revit works is we kind of use the, under the architectural tab, we kind of use uh, the system from left to right, all right? So the first thing is the modify, which is just your cursor, okay? Um, if at any point you need to change out of a tool or escape from a tool, you click on modify and you'll get to the cursor tool, okay? Um, the first thing you do is you add walls, right? Once you have walls, then you can add doors and windows and components, and then you do any kind of structural columns, then roofs, ceilings, and floors, uh, then curtain systems, which we'll talk about a little bit later on, and then stair components, okay? But this is kind of the where you're gonna be living for the most part is walls, doors, windows, and components. Component is anything that is not a door or a window, okay? Um, piece of furniture, um, a lighting fixture, uh, chairs, desks, uh, plants, anything like that is a component, okay? Uh, under walls, we have a little drop-down. If you click on that drop-down, you can see that there's three ways that you can create a wall. Um, you can create an architectural-specific wall, a structural-specific wall, and you can create a wall by face, right? If you have special geometry, um, you can do a wall in that manner. You get more customization that way, all right? We're gonna be focusing on architectural wall. So if I'm gonna left click on the wall, my contextual toolbar changes, okay? It changes with a lot of options here. On the right-hand side of the ribbon, we've got my drawing tools. So I can draw using a line, using a rectangle, um, various polygons, circles, arcs, which can be created in different ways, um, picking lines. If there's line work already in the drawing, I can pick those lines and it'll create a wall based on that, or by picking faces, okay? Um, then we've got some measuring components, and I'll talk about how we use that. And then modifying components, if we need to align or offset, if we need to move, copy, um, rotate, mirror, and trimming. This is all trimming tools down here, doing arrays, okay, and scaling. Very similar to AutoCAD, all right? On the left, going left from that, We've got some specialty trim tools or modifying tools for changing the geometry. Um, most of the time, you're gonna be using either the paint tool, which will come way later, um, or the split face tool, all right? And maybe the join for creating um, special roofs with different, uh, different slopes and whatnot. All right, um, you've got your clipboard, which is your basic copy, cut, and paste options, um, and then properties for this particular view that we're gonna be drawing in. Uh, and then again, back to the modify uh, to do basic selection, all right? So our field is empty. We've got these little boxes and triangles. These boxes and triangles are actually called elevation markers. 
So these elevation markers, sometimes they'll get in the way of your building, sometimes they won't, um, but they are kind of crucial for creating our elevation views um, and they can be moved around, okay? But for right now, we're just gonna keep them put. In between our workspace and our toolbar, we have this little green zone, okay? So it says modify place wall on the left. Um, we have some information about height, all right, or depth of that particular wall. We can choose whether it's gonna go up to level one or level two, and whether it's connected or not connected. And right now it's telling me that that unconnected wall is at a height of 20 feet, okay? Um, location line. Location line is basically how I'm gonna be drawing that wall. If I hold that drop down, um, it shows us that we can draw with the center line of the wall or the center line of the core, right? This, what's the difference between the wall and the core? All right, the core of the wall is going to be, be basically the structural component. So in a residential home, it's gonna be the, the studs, the wood studs. In a commercial building, it's going to be the metal stud work, okay, or the framing work. Um, the wall itself includes the core and whatever other materials that go on, on the outside of that or on the inside of that. So if it's an interior wall, you're going to have sheetrock, okay? If it's an exterior wall, you're going to have sheetrock on one side and you might have brick on the outside or you might have siding on the outside okay and there's all these other layers that happen in between so it's going to find the dead center of that entire width okay which might not be the true width it all depends on what you have built as the wall okay other options is the finished face of the exterior finished face of the interior so maybe the brick wall, the outside of the brick, or the inside of the sheetrock, okay? The wall that you can physically touch on the inside of a house. Um, or you have the exterior or interior of the core face, okay? So that's basically the inside part of the sheetrock, right? So I can touch the outside of one of the wood studs or the other side of the wood stud. And that would be the interior or exterior, all right? So you do have options here. Chaining, checked on or off. Do I want my walls to chain? If I draw one, is the next wall connected or not? Okay, that you turn that off or on. If we want any offsets, uh, do we want a radius? Are we drawing an arc with these walls? All right, and then a join status. Are the two walls that you draw, if you draw two walls, are they allowed to be joined? Or are they allowed to be separate? Okay. Um, so right now in my properties, I have a basic wall. It's a generic eight inch wall. If I left click on the drop down on that big box, I see I've got a lot of options. I've got exterior walls with brick, right? I've got found foundation walls. I've got some generic walls, masonry walls. I have interior walls, retaining walls, soffit walls. And then at the very bottom, some special uh, walls that are curtain walls or glazed, right? That's mostly like glass type walls, kind of what we have on the outside of this building, all glass facade, right? So with a wall, right, we're just going to keep the generic eight inch. That's fine. So I'm going to left click on that and I'm going to choose uh, up here, location line, finish face exterior. Okay. Finish face exterior. I can also make those changes in my properties right here. If I don't like finish face exterior, I change it to finish face interior, right? You guys are going to be doing some as builts. So maybe you choose the interior because you, you're going to be measuring from wall to wall, which is the interior. Okay. Now, When we draw, we try to draw in a clockwise pattern, okay? We draw in a clockwise pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here, up left, left click, and I'm going to drag my mouse, 
Okay, and very similar. It gives you a little bit more feedback, right? Just like AutoCAD when you're drawing. Uh, if I wanted to draw a 60 foot wall, I don't, I'm not gonna click anything just yet. I wanna make sure that it's horizontal and I'm gonna type in 60 apostrophe enter. Okay, and then I should still be connected with my wall tool. I'm gonna go straight down and I'm at like 34 and six inches, something like that. I'm gonna say it's 40 feet. So I type 40 apostrophe enter. All right, I'm gonna continue on. Just like in AutoCAD, it gives me a tracking line as soon as I be as soon as I get even with this end. Zoom in a little bit here. As soon as I get even with this end, it's gonna show me when it lines up. So I'm gonna move, move, move to the left. There's my tracking line. I'm gonna left click here. There it is. And now I can move up. There's my O snap, left click. And I've created a rectangular shape of the building. Okay. Now, why do we draw in a clockwise fashion? Um, this wall doesn't really matter because it's just generic. It's the same on both sides. But if we were to use an exterior wall, uh, the outside would be on the outside and the inside would be on the inside. If you draw an exterior wall in a counterclockwise fashion, then the outside of the wall would be on the inside. Okay, so it matters if you go from left to right or right to left. It's very easy to switch if you make the mistake though. Okay, so a couple of things that you should notice right now and I'm going to go up to my Modify tool and click on the cursor because I want to be able to pick elements now. In order to make changes, okay, first of all, I'm going to left click on this top wall. Two things happen. Okay, three things happen. It highlights to show me that the wall is selected. There is this little double arrow, okay, that shows up. And I can left click on that double arrow to switch the wall. Okay, I just changed its location and orientation. I click it again and it changes back. So it kind of flip flops on itself. So if I had an exterior wall here and I click this, it would flip to the inside. Okay. The other thing you can do is you can use the space bar, it's much easier. Spacebar will flip that wall or whatever is selected on its own. Okay. Then we have a dimension. Okay. A couple things with this dimension that you have to realize. The dimension has these little pips on the outside. Okay. You can click, left click once and it moves to the inside of the wall. I click it again, it moves to the outside of the wall. I click it a third time, Oops. and it moves to the middle of the core. So you have to watch exactly where you're measuring from. If you're gonna do an as-built, you wanna do from inside to inside. So I'm gonna change the pips to measure from the inside. I'm gonna do the same thing down below. Now it's measuring from inside to inside, 40 feet. Now notice where the dimension is. It's on the side, okay? So here's the thing. I selected this wall. What do I wanna do with that wall? I wanna, sh I wanna make sure that I, I have it in the right location. I'm not talking about size, okay? I'm talking about location. Is this located in the right spot? That's why it's giving me a 40 foot distance. So this wall is located 40 feet from this wall. I'm not talking about how wide it is. All right, so if I needed to change this to 30 feet, I type in 30 apostrophe, and it changes the location of this wall. This is what everybody gets wrong. They wanna select the wall and change its distance, okay? You can't really, oh, you can do that, 
okay? But it's a little bit of a backwards way of dimensioning, okay? But it actually makes more sense this way. But it's something you have to get used to. You also have these larger pips where the walls join other walls, okay? So here I can left click, hold it down, and now I can change the distance of that wall. All right, and because now this is selected and it's not joined, it's giving me other options. It's giving me 15, uh, 15 feet, two inches away from the center of this wall. All right, I might wanna change the pip to the inside and say, well, I want this to be 15 feet. Okay, left click an empty space to kind of clear out. Okay. Um, you can drag these very easily, just a simple drag and drop. Or you bring it back to another wall and it should automatically reconnect. Okay, should automatically reconnect. If it doesn't connect, uh, let's see, select joined elements. I'm not gonna worry about it now. If it won't connect, then you'll see lines showing that it's not connected, okay? But these walls are connected. So now, the other thing with uh, selecting a wall element, okay? If I have something selected, I can change it, right? I can go up to my basic wall, generic 8-inch, and I can change it to an exterior brick on CMU, CMU stands for Concrete Masonry Unit. Okay, cinder blocks. Notice it's a lot thicker. Okay, so I just, by selecting that wall, I went into the wall properties and I just chose from the list that I have that this is now a thicker exterior wall. Now I don't see much because by default, my settings are kind of uh, defaulted to course settings. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to change from coarse to fine. So once I change to fine, now I can see more detail of what that wall, cross-section wall, actually looks like. Okay. The next box over, I can change it to shaded and I can sort of get a sense of where the brick is, where the core is, and possibly some other materials, right? The CMU the cinder blocks, okay? But I always leave these on hidden lines. So if you wanna select that wall again and hit spacebar, you'll notice that the brick, here, maybe I'll turn the color on so it's easier to see. Now the brick is on the inside. If I select the wall, hit the spacebar, now the brick is on the outside. Okay. What I've just drawn, go back to my hidden line really quick. I'm going to go to my doghouse. This is my 3D view. Okay, same thing here. I'm going to change this to a fine view. And this one I will change to shaded. I'm going to orbit around by holding the shift key and the mouse wheel. And when I zoom in, you can kind of get a sense of the brick. And I can do the same selection in 3D. There it is. It's highlighted in blue, so I'm going to left-click to select it. I'm going to hit the space bar, and I'm going to left-click out in space, and then you'll see that the, the everything changed. Right? The face is now on the inside. So this is why we try to draw in a clockwise manner so that we get the exteriors in the appropriate direction. If not, select it and spacebar. Okay. In 3D, we have similar, right? Similar dimensional system. We also now have the addition of triangular grips, right? With triangular grips, guess what? I can hold, drop down. Okay, make a half wall. I can extend. Okay, 
what will typically happen is usually right off the bat, you guys will forget to change the height of your walls. So what I would dip, typically do is go into 3D mode and I would select all my walls just at the top. And in my properties, I'm going to say, no, I don't want them to be unconnected. I want them to be connected up to level two. And then hit apply. Okay. What happens if you connect to level one? Yeah, level one is zero, remember? Okay, level two is at 10 feet. So my wall starts at the bottom and I connect it to level two. So if my level two changes to 15 feet, then my walls automatically change to 15 feet because they're connected to whatever level two is. If I change it back to 10 feet, that's just a double click there. Then my walls go to 10 feet. If a wall is unconnected, it's not going to move automatically. Okay, so this can be a good thing or it could be a bad thing, depending on what you're trying to do. Um, if we want to take a close look at the wall, I'm going to click on that exterior brick wall. Okay. Left click on that exterior brick wall and looking at the properties again, I can change its base constraint, right? In other words, where does it start? It starts at level one. Well, maybe if level one, or if I have that basement that kind of creeps up above the ground a little bit. Maybe I say that my base starts at one foot off the ground. So I change it to one foot. And you can see that it went up one foot. All right. If I need to constrain it or offset it anymore, maybe the top needs to be offset. Well, then I can offset the top by two feet and make kind of a, what's known as a parapet. Okay. It's like a little lip on top. All right. So that's what that's going to look like. So you can offset your base, you can offset your top, and you can constrain the top to something else, uh, to another level. Okay. Um, there's edit type. This is very important here. So if we go to edit type. Okay. So here's edit type. <clears throat> edit type is where we can make our very own walls the way that we want them, okay? So we have the family, and the family is basic wall. Then we have a type of wall. So this type of wall is an exterior wall, brick on concrete masonry units. And then, of course, everything that was in the list that we saw previously. I'm not going to go through it right now, but what you need to do if you want to create your own wall is you're going to duplicate whatever wall you want to start from and then you change the settings on your duplicate. So you save the original, make a copy, and then you change the copy to what you want it to be. Okay. Um, the construction of the wall. All right, I'm going to grab this little thing here so we can see a little bit more. The construction of the wall is important. The structure. I can edit the structure. So I'm going to click on edit. This is uh, explaining all the layers of the wall. Okay. So it's telling me that it has a total thickness of one foot, seven and a half inches. Um, it has thermal re resistance and thermal mass. The sample height is 20 feet. Um, and we have this grid system. This grid system basically shows the exterior side uh, on the top and the interior side towards the bottom. Okay, that's how the layers are built. So layer number one is a finish layer. And it's brick, and we have the thickness of that brick. Then we have a thermal layer of air and a thermal layer of rigid insulation, three inches each. Okay. Then a membrane layer. 
zero inches. Membrane layer might be like a vapor barrier. You're talking about a sheet of plastic. If you really want to put in that thickness, it's not going to make that big of a difference, right? Um, we're talking like paper thin. Then you have the core boundary, right? The core boundary and then the structure inside that core boundary. So our core boundary is a concrete masonry unit, a cinder block, seven and five eighths inches thick. Okay, that's what it's made from. And then on the other side, we have another substrate layer, which is metal furring at one and five eighths inches. And then a finished layer of gypsum wallboard, or like to people like to call it sheetrock. All right, five eighths uh, inch thick sheetrock. So any one of these things we can change um, if I didn't want brick, I, ch I click inside the material and then there's an ellipsis, those three dots. I can left click that and it'll bring up my materials. Maybe I want my exterior to be carpet. I don't know why I'd want that, but I can do that. Or asphalt shingles, um, concrete, copper. Okay. These are just some default, um, you know, maybe I want it to be glass or iron or metal furring, oak flooring, uh, parking stripe. No, not really. Uh, softwood lumber. Okay. Um, mosaic gray tile. All right. So maybe I change it to that. So tile, I hit OK. And now I have tile mosaic gray. And I probably want to change the thickness instead of three and five eighths. So I click in here and I'm going to say half inch. So now my total thickness has changed. I've changed that information. Cool thing is I can see a little preview. There's a little preview button here. So now I get to see what that tile looks like in the preview. Each preview is going to be different depending on whatever object or family you're clicking on. I can change to a section view. So this is my section view. And my floor plan view. Okay, I'm going to change this back to brick because so I don't want to mess with the default. Brick common. Hit OK. You notice that the color changes. And this was three and five eighths, so three space five slash eight. And you can see my preview change. So you can build your own custom walls the way you want to design them. Once you're done, you click OK and OK again to get out of the properties. Uh, these are additional properties, these are type properties. There's a lot of stuff in here that you may uh, find not filled out uh, and certain things you will find filled out, okay? But they are here uh, if people want to use them and fill, these in, fill this information out. I'm going to click OK, and that is our wall, okay? So that's about it with walls for right now. Uh, next, we'll get into adding doors.